Hey, I'm Nick Boy, and welcome to Pocket. And today, the shit hits this fan of the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth. Now, it's no secret that I'm a fan of The Binding of Isaac, and a lot of you out there are as well. And you guys have been asking for us to look at Isaac on the show, and we figured with the release of Afterbirth, which is the latest expansion to the game, now would be the perfect time. But before we start, a quick disclaimer. A lot of this game is about picking up weird things, not knowing if they're going to help you or harm you, and then using them and seeing what happens. I am going to pick up things in this game that are brand new to the Afterbirth expansion. I'll be like, I use this all the time. I'm wrong, it's new. I'm also gonna pick up things and think that they're old, but they're actually new things. I'm gonna get a lot of stuff wrong here, because generally, I play this game with a web browser open right there, so I can look at the name of the thing that I just picked up. I don't have that now. You have been disclaimed. Now let's shoot the shit. Okay, so for those of you who haven't played it, the premise of the game is that you play as Isaac, who's a little boy who gets banished to the basement by his religious mother because God told her to kill him. When you're down there, you basically need to fight your way out, and the way you fight is it's a twin stick shooter. Now, it's all procedurally generated, so you go through multiple rooms, and in those rooms are enemies and pickups and stuff, but it's different every single time. You go through a series of rooms, you beat a boss, and you get onto the next level. Finally, you then need to beat Mom, who's like the big bad at the end. Now what Afterbirth has done, has added a huge amount of new pickups, new enemies, new room types, new bosses, you can play as new characters, there's just, pretty much, it just times to everything in the game, which is great because since it's procedurally generated, you're not gonna see all that stuff straight away. You're gonna do multiple, multiple playthroughs until you see all the new stuff, if you even get that far, because the game is really, really, really hard. So let's hope I get far enough to see some of the new stuff. Alright, this is all old stuff, guys. Calm down, this is nothing new here. The per I think the purple guy on the left is new. I did give you a disclaimer at the top, but just I am going to preface everything I say in this episode with I think. I think there were doors in the last version of this game. Holy crap! Literally, there's poo everywhere! That's not new, that's, that's very old. Uh, oh, this could be it. This could be it for Isaac! <laughs> so many flies. Why would you do this to a kid? Just circle, 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 I'm dead. I'm dead, let's go again. Oh, maybe this is, okay. I think this is entirely new in that this is a burning basement. So yes, the premise here is that everything is on fire. That's gonna make things so much harder. All right, let's go this way. Ah! Oh! <laughs> no! Keys, that fire is shooting things at me. I'll put all these out because sometimes you get some cool stuff when you extinguish a fire. Remember that, kids. So you can see on the left, I've got one gold coin, one bomb, and one key. The keys unlock chests and sometimes special doors to rooms that have extra goodies in them. Okay, so that's the boss door up there. Ah! I mean, say what you will about the fact that this seems to be some sort of aborted fetus with a giant brain and I'm shooting it with the tears because my mother hates me. But the game has a style. This isn't like most other games. It has that same thing as Spelunky, where it's just that sort of like, how far can I get one more round? Pick it up. It's like a perfect game to pick up for sort of 15 minutes when you've got something else to do. Which is why I don't have a huge amount of playtime invested in it, but it's sort of like consistent because it is something that I just play in between doing other things. Did I waste my bomb? Yeah, sure. Uh oh. What? And I got an achievement. Okay, I'm gonna get this. And I'm gonna go see Mr. Mega. Now, guys, I don't know if Mr. Mega is new or not. Is that a belly button? Okay. So just got an upgrade. My feet are stronger. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Oh, maybe I can walk over this stuff. Yes! And now I've got wide tears. Oh, look at how big his eyes are. He's already become a monster. I do have three keys. I might just open this chest. Useless. Well, not useless, because I got some coins and I got a shield heart. Little horn. 
want to hurt him? He's so happy. Ah! What? What? I'm guessing, you know, judging by the tone of the rest of the game, I'm guessing what he's doing, yeah, he's pooping. Those are dark poos. Ah! Could try to shoot those balls! What? <laughs> I did it. And I got a wooden spoon. So now I move faster. Oh, kids gave me poop. So this is new, these sort of long, thin rooms. This is not something that was there before. You're generally always relying on big squares. Golden brains. I wonder, I'm gonna see if there could be a secret room. Here. Let's find out. I have no bombs. Useless, useless. This doesn't look healthy. I got five poison bombs. This is fantastic. And now I'm a zombie. This is one of the reasons that the game is so replayable. Not only, you know, the gameplay changes all the time, but the little upgrades to him, you, you kind of make him into a really bad little, like sometimes he gets laser eyes and, and sometimes he gets weird and gorged things and you sort of transmute this little boy into, into a monster. Oh yeah. Soy milk, damage down and tears up. Right, okay, so now I've got less Hurtful tears, but I've got more of them. I like how they're still wide tears, but now they're tiny wide tears. If I combine that, because everything stacks, like that sort of stuff stacks, there's pills that you pick up that are sort of, uh, you can carry one at a time. So there's items, I think it's like pills and cards and stuff that you can carry, and then when you find a new one, you put that one down and then you pick up another one. But then there's items like that, which is like, it just changes how your tears go. So then you can stack something on top of it. So right now I've got, low damage tiers, but a lot of them. I could pick up a modifier that has high damage, or my tiers are on fire, and then I'll have multiple tiers on fire with high damage that are sort of wide, and that's when you start becoming more and more powerful. So it's a good thing I went to this, that room, so that I can beat Monstro, who I know is not new. Ah, oh, you dodged it. You crafty, you crafty giant brain. Ah! Oh, I'm on half. This is it, guys. This is the end of Nick! Stay away! Oh, I cannot believe I made it through that. <sighs> Just gonna go pick those up. What does this do? The belt. I'm faster again. I don't know if I needed faster. Here! Don't make me die because of flies. That would be the worst way to go. Do something, Tears. Please? Please do something. Please, for the love of all that is holy, do something! I don't want to go into the next room. Oh, shit. 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 So I have to get to those buttons? Okay. Shooting does nothing. Isaac. I love this game. Uh, the thing that is so fantastic about this game is that when you die, it's because you totally screwed up. The game's really hard, but it's rarely unfair, and I think that's the key thing to one of these sort of procedurally generated roguelikes. It's generally your fault that you are not playing the game anymore. With Afterbirth adding so much stuff, it's just fantastic that the discoverability is going to be there for people who feel like maybe they've seen everything that the game has. You're continuing to play to see what kind of run you get, but you sort of known everything that you could pick up. Now there's so much more to explore. There's also a daily challenge sort of leaderboard thing, so you can go in there and compete against other people. Something, again, really important for these sorts of games. These are bragging rights games, so that's great that that is in there. I'm glad that this expansion has finally come out. Edmund McMillan, the creator of the game, got distracted for a while with, uh, with Fingered. Ooh. Feels good. 
But I'm glad he got that out of his system so that he can continue to focus on what is, in my opinion, a truly great game. All right, that's it for today's episode of Pocket My Pocketeers. Nick Boy out. I was killed by this thing in some cave. I leave all that I own to my cat, Gubby. Goodbye, cruel world. It's weird that you could write that after you died.